Hello families, we're excited you're here and maybe you just stumbled upon us or maybe you come every Sunday and watch, but welcome to Ridge Kids. My name is Randy, if I haven't gotten to meet you. uh, I get to be the children's pastor here at Ridgefield Nazarene. We call our children's ministry Ridge Kids. And each week we have a a new video and a new service that you guys can join us at home. If you ever want to come into the church building at 9 or 10.30, we'd love to have you. We have things for for, uh, young kids toddlers, preschool, kinders, all the way up to school age. So we'd love to see you. But this month is November. It's a new month and we're excited. Uh, We're excited because as I've been talking to families, I've been seeing that that people are excited about their faith and they're wanting to take their faith to the next level. And that's kind of the heart of what we do here at Ridge Kids. So this month we're talking about contentment. If you have an older student and school aged, uh, we're going to be looking at what can we be thankful for what we have? And our theme is called Upcycle. So if you're wondering why I have this on, uh, this is my cycling or running vest. So if I'm outside and it's dark and I'm running outside or I'm riding my bicycle, I'm going to have my vest on so I can be seen. And my bike, it's not great. It's an older bike, right? And I could probably have a nicer one. And I can probably look at my friend and say, wow, look at his bike. I could go so much faster if I had that bike. But our theme is, is learning to roll with what you've got. So think of a bicycle, and we're rolling. I got my vest on. But really, the heart of it is, is like, something I have might not be as nice as the person next to me. Or students, kids, you might think, oh, I wish I was this way, or I wish I had this. But we learn that God's heart for us is wonderful, and the things that he gives us are wonderful, and we can be thankful for that. So upcycle, you can put your uh, bicycle gear on at home. If you've got a bike helmet, go for it. Our younger students, Miss Miranda is going to come up soon. She's going to have a service for you guys. And we're talking about community garden. And that God produces and he gives us things that we need. And he gives us everything we need. And he just wants us to grow. So similar to that garden theme, students, we just want to grow closer to Jesus. And so Ridge Kids Junior, that's going to kick off here first. Stick around if you have an older student for our upcycle theme and learning to be content. And contentment is being thankful for what you have. So I think you guys are going to like this. I'm not going to say too much because Erica is going to launch it and see, but I'll check back with you guys here in a little bit. But have a great service. We're glad you're here. Families, parents, we want you to interact with your kids and have a shared experience. So stick around. You guys can sing together, pray together, read your Bibles together, but have a great week. And I think we've got a great message in November that you guys are going to love. So have a great service. See you soon. Good morning, Ridge Kids Juniors, friends and family. My name is Miss Miranda, and I am so glad that you are joining us for November's Ridge Kids Junior Online. I would love to know that you are hanging out with us this morning or whenever you drop in later this week. So if you could text the word FAMILY to 360-552-7794, that would be awesome. Okay. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that it was so good to see some of you at our Ridge Kids Junior Family Next Level Grow event last Friday. It was so much fun to paint together, and we just had a blast. If you missed out on this family event, don't worry because we've got another one coming up later this winter. So stay tuned for more details about that. Okay, friends, if you remember, in October, we learned that we are super kids. And what that means is that God made us to do big things. We can do big things no matter how young or old we are. We can do big things anywhere we go. And sometimes the big things that we do don't actually feel very big, but because God's asking us to do them, they're big. And we also learned that we get to praise God for making us to do big things, because that is probably one of the most fun parts about being followers of Jesus, is that we get to praise God for being able to do that. Okay, but as you know, it is no longer October. We are in a new month, November, which comes with a new theme. So if you could drum roll it out. And our theme is community garden. 
That's right, friends, community garden. And you might be wondering what community garden has to do with our Bible stories this month. Well, this month we are going to use our community garden to remind us that we can thank God for everything. When we're in a community garden, sometimes we're with our families, sometimes we're with some friends and neighbors. There's always food growing in a community garden, and sometimes there's even people that we might not even know. But we get to be thankful for all of those things, and we're going to look at that this month. But this week, we are going to focus on being thankful for family. And in our Bible story this week, we are going to meet a family that's a little bit different than what you would think a family might look like. But did you know that we can thank God for our families no matter what we look like? And that is a pretty awesome thing. All right, are you guys ready to dive into the Bible story today? Me too. But first, we have a new memory verse. Are you guys ready for it? All right, let's shake out those words. All right, it is, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Psalms 111. All right, we're going to practice that one more time, okay? Are you guys ready? I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Psalms 1, 11, 1. All right, good job, you guys. All right, before we get started on our video, I just want to encourage you guys to pray together today and thank God for each other. God has brought you guys some pretty awesome people in your families, and you guys can spend time together today praying for those people that he has given you. And then don't forget to hang out a little bit longer so that you can join Pastor Randy with Ridge Kids Online. All right, friends, I will see you next week, and I hope you have a wonderful week celebrating your family. Bye-bye!
Hi friends, I'm Kai, and my family and I have been working in a super fun community garden down the street. We get to go every weekend to help in the garden. This time we're picking the yummy food from the garden. My dad's favorite is carrots. My cousin loves watermelon. Uncle helps in the garden sometimes too, and his favorite thing to eat is corn on the cob. I love working in the garden with my family. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Kai. Who? Who? Growing fresh food to eat, are you? Oh, hi, Ollie. My family and I have been helping in the community garden. It's so fun. Working with your family is great. It's true. I know another family who helped each other, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. That was so good, Stormy Jane. Oh, you want a treat too? <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> oh, hi friends, I'm Carrie and this is my best dog, Stormy Jane. My uncle just gave me a yummy carrot from his garden. It was so good. It was such a special treat. We love treats, don't we, Stormy Jane? <laughs> my uncle loves to take care of us with things from his garden. I'm so thankful for my family, in fact, that reminds me of a story. This is Naomi. Does she look happy or sad to you? Sad, that's right. Naomi was sad because she didn't have any family. Her husband and sons had died and she was all alone. So she decided to go back to the town where she grew up. But look, it's Ruth. Ruth was married to Naomi's son. Ruth said, I'll go with you, Naomi. I'll be your family. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. God gave Naomi family to help her. Thank you, God. Can you say that with me? Thank you, God. So Naomi and Ruth walked together all the way to town where Naomi used to live. When they got there, Naomi and Ruth were hungry, but they didn't have any money to buy food. So Ruth went to see if she could find something for them to eat. Well, not far from where they lived, a man named Boaz had people working in his fields, gathering all the grain. The fields were like big gardens, and the workers worked very fast. But as they went, they would leave grain on the ground behind them. Ruth saw this and began to pick up the grain from the ground to take it home to Naomi for food. Boaz saw her collecting food. When he found out that she was family, Boaz wanted to help her and make sure she had lots of good food to pick from his garden. Wow, God sent family to help Ruth and Naomi. Thank you, God. Say it with me. Thank you, God. When Ruth went home to Naomi with good food to eat, Naomi was so surprised and so thankful. What do you think Naomi said? That's right. She said, thank you, God. Ruth and Naomi said thank you for the family God gave them to help them. All families look different and all families can take care of each other. Thank you, God, for giving us our families. Oh, hey, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who can you thank for everything? I can thank God for everything. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can you thank for everything? I can thank God for everything. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. Ruth and Naomi were thankful for their family, and we can thank God for our families, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow. Ruth and Naomi were thankful for the family God gave them, and we can be thankful for our families too. 
I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I'm super thankful for my family and can't wait to pick food from the garden for today's snack. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey, Rich Kids. I am so excited that you are with us online. We uh, have a lot of great things in store for you this month. Um, for the month of November, we're going to be talking about a really cool topic. We're going to be talking about contentment. Every week, we're going to define contentment and um, so that you will learn what the word contentment means. And by the end of the month, if somebody asks you, what is contentment, you will have an answer for them. Um, so contentment is this. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. You know, sometimes we, um, we look online or we look um, in magazines or even at the store on the shelves and we see things that we want, we wish we could have. Sometimes we see things that other kids have that, or other people have that we don't have and we really want it. And sometimes it's hard to be content. And... Um, God really wants that for us because when we are content, we feel way better about life and our situation. And so we're going to talk about it all month about, about how contentment is going to just help us live for Jesus in a better way. Um, and so don't forget that contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. This week in week one, we're going to be talking about a really cool character. His name is Paul. And he um, Paul is a great example of contentment. I hope you stick with us and um, listen to that Bible story. All month, we're also going to talk about a certain memory verse. And the memory verse for this month is Luke 12, 15. And I'm going to read it for you. Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. This verse um, I mean, it explains contentment so well. And so I hope you'll work on um, reading it with your family, that you will uh, maybe even work on memorizing it so that you don't even have to look at the paper when, you, uh, when you're saying it. It just helps you. It will help you when you hide God's word in your heart and, um, and when you memorize it to have it when you need it. So when you're feeling the urge to be jealous or want something from someone else, you, that verse can help you... Um, to stay content. Anyway, we have a lot of great things for you. We have discussion questions that I hope you'll, um, you'll talk about with your family. I hope you will uh, watch our videos and just keep t learning about what contentment means. darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. 
sorry. All right, I felt the sting. Ready? I felt the sting of the fire, but I saw you in the flames. Just when I thought, just when I thought it was over. All right, step out. Ready? You broke me out of the grave. Super loud. Ready? I'm going to climb a mountain. I'm going to shout about it. I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I have a friend in Jesus I am a child of love we go, yeah! Nothing can change. Ready? Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change the way I belong to you. Ready? Yes, I do. Nothing can separate. You guys remember? Ready? Nothing can change. Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change. I belong, I belong to you. Ready? Yes, I do. Nothing can separate. Good job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb a mountain. Ready? I'm a child of love. I am a child of love. All right, found a world of freedom. I found a world of freedom. I am a child of love. All right, do the chorus. Ready? I'm gonna climb a mountain. I'm gonna shout about it. I am a child of love. All right, world of freedom. I found a world of freedom. I have a friend in Jesus. I am a child of love. Yeah? Yeah. You cannot. Can't who? Cannot. Can't who? There's no way that you can ride a unicycle. Yes, I can. It's easy. Easy? <laughs> Prove it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I will. Unicycle John, here I come. Woo! <laughs> I thought you said you could ride a unicycle. I can. But I still have the training wheel on. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. John? Yeah. You going on a bike ride? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get out and get some exercise every day, so I've been taking rides around the neighborhood. Oh, that's a nice looking bike. Oh, yeah? You yeah. think so? I Man, I've had this thing for a few years. I mean, sure, it's a little old, a little rusty, but it still takes me where I want to go. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> you ever look at your old rusty bike and think, this is all I need? Uh, Yes? Well, you're wrong. Looney Larry here with the latest deals in physical fitness to keep you as healthy as a horse. Horses are not particularly healthy. Ugh, I was hoping to get some exercise, but what's the deal with all this fresh air? Gross. I wish I could get sweaty in air conditioning and pay a lot of money for something I could do for free. Lucky you. Introducing the Lariton, a top-of-the-line exercise bike. Want to ride a bike but not go anywhere? Get a Lariton today and ditch your old, sad, bad, rusty, barely functioning, low-quality, stinky, unacceptable, cheap downer of a bike. It'll make your life better. Would I lie? I must have one. But, John... Oh, it's here! Oh. Help me move it in. Come on, come on, I'm sure it's heavy. 12 and a half minutes later. <laughs>
Well. Well, what? Is it worth it? Are you happy now? Oh, yeah, I'm so happy. Good. This is way better than a bicycle that actually goes places. Now I've got everything I need. Are you absolutely sure your Laratop has everything you need? I was sure. Well, now you can upgrade your Laraton device with this attached digital display. Be instantly transported to other locales as you exercise. You can bike in the woods, turn of the century London, a dystopian future, your very own home. We've got all sorts of options. What? Look, I'm in outer space. Order a Laraton today. It is out of this world. Well, there's no way you'll... Thanks, John. I know, I know, I know. Why do you need all of this stuff? You already have a real bike. Yeah, but my real bike can't take me through the Swiss Alps. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> now I'm absolutely 100% certain that I have everything I need. Whoa. But do you really? Uh, release my friend! Love owning the Laraton, but hate all the exhausting exercise that comes with it? Introducing Larabox! For a small fee, you can get credit for your workouts without even doing them. Just enter your credit card number at the Larabock Marketplace and get fit without ever working out again. Would I lie? No. You need to purchase Larabock. You don't need any of this, John. <laughs> need. Do be shredded! No! John! John! Yeah. Wait! Listen! <gasps> Uni Larry! No. Uh. It's Bible story time with Kellen! Oh! Hey guys! You okay? Great, Kellen. Uh, quick question, can I borrow your credit card? Ignore him, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about this. The Apostle Paul wrote this in a letter to the Church of Philippi. You can read it in the book of Philippians. Paul wrote, I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. You see, Paul knew what it was like to have more than he needed, and he also knew what it was like to not have enough. In fact, when he wrote these words, Paul wasn't a free man. He was being held under house arrest. So what is it, Kellen? What's the secret of being content? Well, I'll tell you. After we check in with our friends Becky and Bethilda. Whoa, look at the hall of candy these two have. This, my friends, is what it looks like to have more than you need. And you think it should be easy to be content in a situation like this, right? But then, Bethelda. Who would do this? Who would do this? No! No! Not the sour candy! Who would give out sour candy? Ah! I hate sour candy with all my might! Maybe Becky has it figured out. Peanut butter? Oh, no, no, no. I don't like peanut butter. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, these got to go. But you know what? My dad likes peanut butter. So I'll just set these aside for him. You see that? Becky was able to turn something she didn't like into a positive. While Bethilda, well, she lost her cool. Becky was content, while Bethilda was not. And that's when things are going good. What happens when things aren't so good? Aw, it looks like Becky and Bethilda are a little under the weather. Okay, maybe a lot of it under the weather. This would be one of those times when it's hard for anyone to be content. Dad! I'm uncomfortable! Dad! I need more pillows! 
Hello? Bethilda's a little upset. And I totally get it. I can get that way when I'm sick too, or when I'm hungry, or when I don't get my way, or when someone has something that I want. It isn't always easy to be content. But then Paul wrote that he learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. Thank you for the ginger ale. I wish I wasn't sick, but it's nice to know that I have someone taking care of me. There are going to be times when things aren't going perfectly. You're going to get sick. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be too hot or too cold or too something. And in those times, you'll need to know the secret of being content. Here it is. Paul wrote, I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. I am content whether I am well fed or hungry. I am content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. Jesus is the secret. He gives us the strength to be content no matter what happens. So Jesus can help me be content and stop obsessively upgrading my Laraton? Sure. Then why do I still want Larabux? Well, it's like what Paul wrote. I've learned the secret. It was something he had to learn, and it probably took some time to really get it. Mm. So it's a process. And if I allow Jesus to work in my life over time, I can learn how to be content? My work here is done. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. You feel better, John? No. Being content is hard, but I'm learning. Then we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. Reveal the question. When is it hardest to be content? Oh, well, it's obviously hard to be content when things are bad, but I actually think it's really tough to be content when things are close to perfect. Yeah, I totally get that. Like when you're at a theme park for a big vacation, but have to wait in a long line. Or when you've got exactly what you need and uh, something better comes along. Yeah, but is the Laraton really better? Uh, nah, I think I'm gonna return it. All sales final. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. This was the So-and-So Show. You know what I could do with this? What could you do? Hang laundry on it. Oh, that's yeah, great. I would yeah. get it nice and dry. Yeah. yeah. This would get nice and dry from my nice. sweat. You know, an exercise bike is all well and good, but riding a bike in the great outdoors, well, ain't nothing better. Woo, look at this scenery. <laughs> wow, this feels great. You can feel the wind. Can't see it, but you can feel it. Far, you know. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs>
Have a great week living it out and be content and thankful for what God's doing in your life. All right, have a great week. We'll see you next week.